The G20 hasn't yet established itself as a forum for discussing large-scale security issues, but it may in the future. It certainly has that possibility because it does contain a critical mass of the uh, countries of the world in terms of population, economy, military spending, and so forth. So it's a natural venue to talk about security issues. On the other hand, uh, the G20 is young, and uh, new organizations have to go through a shakedown cruise. And in particular, they have to establish their competence and legitimacy in a, a focused issue area before they can broaden out and address other issue areas. So in my view, it's actually entirely appropriate for the G20 to be concentrating at the moment on economic issues, and in particular on the currency issue, because that is, in fact, a, an, an item of some urgency at the moment. I think it would be a, a bad thing for the G20 in Seoul to distract itself by starting to talk about security issues. Well, of course, the G20 was established uh, to deal with the global financial crisis, and the world still faces um, some severe uh, economic issues um, surrounding currency, surrounding IMF reform. And so I think that the focus should continue to be on those issues uh, for the foreseeable future, especially the upcoming summits uh, and the summit in Seoul. Uh, however, um, you know, I think in the future there should be some room to consider adding different issues to the agenda depending on uh, what is, uh, if there are crises in uh, the global system, things like security, things like the environment. This is a unique gathering of states uh, and which covers um, uh, all the, the, the globe and I think that uh, uh, there is a lot of power to make important decisions uh, within this gathering. So I think over time that there should be the ability to add those issues to the agenda. We have to be also realistic that uh, on the side that even within sessions, even when the economy is the primary issue, that some of these other issues will be brought to bear and, and could enter the agenda in an informal manner anyways. So I think over time that it, it can evolve into uh, a decision making uh, forum uh, where uh, a broader array of issues can be discussed. The human security agenda could use a boost from anywhere it can get it. At the moment it's uh, almost moribund. A lot of the countries that championed human security have either given up the game, Canada for example, or relabeled it, repackaged it, moved on to something else. Uh, R2P, the responsibility to protect, which was so integrally related with the human security agenda, is uh, certainly on the back burner, globally speaking. So anywhere that human security can get a boost from, it should get a boost. And the time may come when the G20 is the place to do that. We'll have to wait and see. The human security agenda has to a certain, has hit a roadblock, so to speak, in the international community. And I think, uh, you know, it would certainly be given a significant boost if it were endorsed and, and, and discussed and advanced under the, the, uh, the uh, within the G20. However, I think, you know, forcing that issue is not necessarily the right approach, that I think that first we have to talk about just bringing issues of security to the agenda, bringing, uh, widening the agenda beyond the economic sphere. And so I think that in and of itself would be a, a positive step. The G20 won't ever rival NATO as an uh, organization for actually making hard decisions about security issues and deploying hard military force. It's not an alliance. Uh, there are members in the G20 that, in fact, aren't particularly, um, uh, aren't, aren't common travelers when it comes to specific security issues. So the world will never replace NATO with the G20. On the other hand, the G20 would be, in principle, an excellent place to preempt distant uh, looming security threats by a meeting of the minds, specifically on the underlying issues that might then percolate up into uh, serious security crises somewhere down the road. Well, I think that that's why the G20 is a sort of a very attractive gathering to deal with a broader range of global issues. And that's precisely because it is more representative of global power structures and it is more broadly representative of the plurality of states in the world. It's not a Western club like NATO. It's not, it's, um, not a small grouping of powerful states like the, the, the Security Council, which no longer reflects 
uh, global power structures anyways. Um, so I think in that sense, this is a, a very positive evolution um, to, uh, in, in, in the global system where we could have this more representative body deliberating on some of the most important issues of the day. We have to remember that the, the G8 itself went through a long evolutionary process of growth. It started off, in fact, as a four-country meeting specifically on macroeconomic policy coordination in Europe in the 1970s. From there it grew in membership and the agenda broadened. I'd expect the G20 to undergo a similar kind of evolution. It may not grow in terms of number of mem members, but its uh, agenda growth will take time and uh, will have to begin with something very focused where this particular group of countries has a particular competence. That certainly is at the moment currency issues.